to, uh, to, to end today's live stream, I want to bring on a special, special guest, my friend, longtime friend, Dan Mervish here from, from the slam, one of the founders of slam dance. Yay. Um, an incredible, Yay. Hey Dan, how's it going? Hey, great, Chris. Nice to see you. I've been listening to the show all afternoon. You guys do an amazing job. Uh, great. Oh my God. Are you wearing this a stuff new, out. are you wearing a new movie show t-shirt? Oh my God. What? Look at, Look that. at that. And it's like That's covered crazy. What are, what are the odds that I'd be wearing this? <laughs> this was, it was one of my first experiences in television. I did a show for FX called the new movie show with Chris Gore. Thankfully they uh, cast me as the host. Um, someone also named Chris Gore, the same name as the show. So it, 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 it all worked out. Uh, yeah. We're going to, we're, but Dan, I just want to have you here because, um, and of course, I think, you know, you know, Alan Ng and, and Sabina. Hi, Alan. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if I know uh, Sabina. Nice yeah, to meet hi, you. Dan. I know Alan. I'm hi. a friend hey, of Skizzes, by the way. You're what? <laughs> I'm a friend of Skizzes. Oh, used to well, every, who Baltimore. is it though? Yeah. 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 He has a new film. Of course. He has a new yeah. film. Yeah. Uh, no, but I want to bring we Dan need up. I want to bring Dan on to just talk about like what's happening in the world now. We're now, this is our second year of a virtual Sundance. Um, it's, it's, you know, are we going to go into a third year? I've tried to argue very passionately. I tried to argue that maybe they should consider moving things to the spring, summer. I just wanted to get your thoughts on just like the festival world as a whole, where we're going, what's happening. Um, uh, you know, you do have some perspective. I knew, know you still have a connection to slam dance. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you tend to like. What are your just sort of general thoughts on where we are in, in the world of festivals? Well, I, I, I just wrote an article in that was in Variety last week that kind of goes into one aspect of it, which is that I, I think there's been a, and this kind of predates the pandemic, but the pandemic kind of accelerated it, which is that you know, the, the dis, quote unquote discovery festivals, Sundance and to a lesser degree slam dance and then South by, and then Tribeca are in a pretty narrow window of the calendar. They're, they're from January to, you know, May, it's basically the, the, the early spring. Um, and then the industry and, and the, pr the press and media, they pay attention to new films by new directors then, uh, or not, or new films by old directors then, but then for about eight months, they, even though there's plenty of festivals, there's, as we know, there's thousands of festivals out there. Most of the big high profile festivals during that time, anytime after May and into the fall, into the summer, into the fall, are so hyper focused on the award season. And, and oh, what's the Oscar buzz? And how many Oscar winners can we, you know, have? or potential Oscar winners can we have at our festival this year and collab? What, how can Toronto, you know, take more premieres than Venice and how can Telluride compete with Toronto? And it's, and it's really all about the, the festival or sorry about the awards films. And of course those films, obviously some great films there, but they already have distribution. They already have, uh, you know, marketing, they're already awards contenders. So, and most of them have big stars in them. The, so the problem is if you have a new film that wants to come out or premiere at a festival in the fall or the summer, it's r impossible to get any kind of real oxygen, even though there's some great festivals during those times. So what I think, and this really dovetails to what you were saying yesterday, is that um, the festival calendar just really needs to be spread out and kind of rethought. And, and, and COVID is giving us a chance to do that. Uh, because I agree with you. I think Sundance itself is not sustainable as a January festival. You don't need to be an epidemiologist to, to know that every, you know, if you have a festival at 8,500, you know, feet high in the winter, three weeks after New Year's Eve, and expect people from all over the world to come, some of them are going to be sick, and they're and the and everyone else is going to get sick too. So, um, so I think first and foremost, I think I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Sundance should change their dates, and and you know, March. November, I don't know, it doesn't matter to me when, but they can go whenever they want because they're the biggest festival, at least in North America. So more power to them, you know, go where you want. And and Park City would appreciate that. They they don't necessarily like having Sundance in in January because they take up all the all the, the ski condos and you know that's bad for business. So Sundance would or, or Park City would much prefer it if it was in you know spring or summer. Well, I, I'm I'm just so pleased Poor that fall. someone of, of your stature 
actually agrees with me on this because, I mean, look, you're an expert in your own right. You've been involved in festivals and uh, producing, directing, writing films, um, and being a part of the indie film scene since the 90s. Books. And an author, and an yeah. author, there you go. Um, oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it does sort of befuddle me. I don't often get to use the word befuddle, but I'm gonna say that word. Um, that why, why is there not a, a conversation about this? Because flu season will never go away. Flu season is now COVID season. It's not going away. I, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to Sundance or in Park City Slam Dance, come back. I'm sick almost for like sometimes 10 days, two weeks after. It's like the, you know your energy because it is a grind. It's a marathon. You know, four hours of sleep a night. You're drinking emergency. You're, you're, you're not catching a full meal. You're eating like chicken skewers at some uh, event. You know, you're living on appetizers, you know, not because you can't afford food. It's just, the, it's a time thing, right? Like, yeah. A sit down meal is, is tough to grab unless you plan your schedule right. I like to keep a fairly open schedule, but it's, it's, I wonder if there's, I mean, it would throw everything off, right? Because Sundance does set the tone. A lot of, a lot of festival directors come to, to Park City looking for movies to program and Slamdance is in the mix. Slamdance has my heart. You know that. Dan. Yeah. Slamdance has my heart because it's like a, it's like a punk rock. I, I feel like it's almost like Slamdance is like a track that, if Sundance had balls, they would just make slam dance a thing. They would they would make it part of the but I just love the support that slam dance has for the the indie film community and and it, it has its own flavor. Like sometimes we even see a movie and they're like, oh that's a slam dance movie. You know, right? There's this whole vibe to it. But I don't know why there's not this thinking because this could very well get canceled again next year and three years in a row. Think of the lost revenue for the city, right? If you if you sort of like look, it's already ski season anyways, right? So that's not going away. But I've been to Park City in the summer. It's gorgeous. Everywhere you look, it's a postcard. There's no reason you couldn't. I think it would change the vibe. It would be really cool. I don't know why that's not something that's in consideration. Um, so what? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they are. I wouldn't be surprised if they are starting to think about it. I mean, look, they've got their hands full this week, obviously. So they're not, you know, they're just focusing on on their immediate issues. But I, I think, you know, in in three weeks, when when the festivals are over, if they're not talking about it, I I would be sh shocked. Um, I, there was there was an interesting interview with Tabitha Jackson, who's one of the main people at, at Sundance, uh, like three days ago, where she she said she was talking about like, oh, what what could they have done? Because obviously they've gotten a lot of grief for m making their decision to cancel the live so late in the game. Uh, and that's that's a whole other issue. And and she said that they thought about postponing it to later in the spring, but that it would mess up everyone else's schedules. Uh, other festivals and and i can see why that would be consideration for this year immediately like uh, it, it's just logistically hard to, right, to right. postpone anything but i think moving forward sundance has to has to own the fact that they're the biggest you know festival in 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 the country and in in north america and they should they can go wherever the hell they want and they should they should just make their own decision and then every and if south by has to move or tribeca has to move great let them Fine. move. It's look, the care. world exactly. The world has already been disrupted, right? The world yeah. has already been disrupted. Why not disrupt this? And absolutely they could, even, they could even do a trial festival, do a four-day summer Sundance with maybe make it a best of just as a trial. Do it this summer. Um, you know, make it four to six days or something. Look, I love when they uh when they will close off parts of Main Street, like sort of at the bottom of Main Street, you know, they'll close it off for like a block yeah. and have like a block party. There are ways to do it. They could test some outdoor screenings, do a trial run this, this summer, uh, just to, just like a, like a four day, like a long weekend, right? Just to test, test the logistics, test doing it in the summer. Can they attract people? Can they get people driving in from Salt Lake? Maybe someone like myself might drive in from, from the West coast, who knows? But but I, I think that I think that it's got to be thought about it because flu season's never going away. As someone who finally figured out, maybe I should get a flu shot every year, and I <laughs> finally began to get a flu shot. Yeah. Um, I, remember, I think it was on 2004. I got really, really horrible pneumonia. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So so 
yeah, it's something that really needs to be considered. I just think that like, you know, positives from this are the virtual festival. Clearly people have been responsive to that. Can it be better? Yes. And and earlier in our conversation, we 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 talked about some things that could be could be made better when it comes to virtual. But like changing the calendar, consider it. Consider it Sundance. You know, um, I'm sure Tabitha Jackson doesn't even know who we are, uh, Film Threat or myself. But like, consider it. Um, couple couple. I want to get to some comments quick, and we'll continue our conversation. Sure. Funny girl. Right. Funny girl says. Hey to all, as it is almost, it is almost midnight here, I have to leave. Topic is interesting, but it's late for me. See you in the next uploads. Bye. Chad P. Crawford says, Dan's hat is on another level. Um, Chad also says, Sundance has nothing to lose in trying some of these ideas, it seems. And uh, I'm going to butcher your name, Sujua, and I'm, my apologies. Uh, so one day I will learn your name. I will learn your name, Sujua. Uh, a guy who's become a great friend on on social media and our, our correspondence is living on App appetizers is a good title for a movie about indie filmmaking. And yeah. our earlier conversation, Sujua says teens and film directors should stay off social media parentheses. Directors can avoid negative review links and comments better for mental health. I think just, I don't use social media as much as I used to. I really just use it to promote. I use uh, social media mostly professionally to promote things I'm doing. I really don't use it on the regular. Occasionally I'll say something snarky um, or incendiary for fun, but I don't use social media nearly as much as I used to. It's just, I find it not particularly productive. I prefer to like work on projects, but Dan, what else? We talked about the Slam Dance Film Festival, you know, yeah. um, earlier in our conversation, we were talking about, um, and let me, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I have to edit this. Because we're we gotta we gotta we gotta get into a slam dance discussion, um, but uh, you are one of the Dan Mervish. You are one of the founders of Slam Dance, and I slam, am indeed. slam Dance has it's a it's a it's the punk rock spirit of Park City. When Slam Dance is there, Slam Dance is also does year round events in other cities, additionally screenings in the Los Angeles area, or they used to at the Arclight Cinemas in Hollywood when that was around. But um, what's what's up with Slam Dance now? I, I'm aware of a couple of the films that are playing there. I happen to see this is kind of a preview. We'll talk about this later in the week when we pivot to Slam Dance. I saw Mark Pellington's The Severing, which is absolutely amazing film, indescribable, kind of a dance experimental, um, just bizarre uh, experience. But what are your thoughts on Slam Dance this year? And I know also you have a movie coming out soon, 18 and a half. So let's basically this segment called catching up with Dan. Yeah, let's yeah, there let's, you go. let's put you front yeah. and center here. Catching there up with right that again. There, there we are. <laughs> and then hang on a second. Is there a film threat quote? Yeah, are we on, on there? Poster? Yeah, nice. Yeah, there it is. Nice. You made a poster. <laughs> All right. And as Chris <laughs> is old enough to remember, I have had a film threat quote on every poster for every film I've ever made. Um, uh, even the bad ones. So, uh, no, I, um, yeah, no, it's, a, it's always an honor to have film thread on there. And, and, um, yeah, so we, uh, so where should I start? Uh, slam dance. Yeah. So we're starting in a few days and, um, and it's, uh, like Sundance, it's, it's all virtual this year. Um, and, and like Sundance, we would love, it. I mean, uh, and by the way, if, if Sundance did move to another part of the year, we would just move with them and that's fine. In the same way that when can shifted a few months last year, directors Fortnite and critics, we just shifted with them and that's, you know, that's just what you do. Um, and honestly it would be, it would just be easier for us too. Cause you know, logistically it's a, it's a pain to, to put on a festival at the, in, you know, at the height of ski season, it's just, everything's way more expensive then. Um, so yeah, Slam Dance starts soon. Um, you know, it really hasn't changed much. It's, it's still, I mean, it's, it'll be virtual, but you can buy a pass for $10, which is just ridiculous. You can, it's like insanely cheap. Um, it's going to be part of something starting called the Slam Dance channel, which I don't know much about, but it's, very exciting. It'll be a set top box thing to do year round screenings of things, but it's kind of, we're launching it with this year's festival. But, um, but in terms of the quality of the festivals and the kinds of uh, the quality of the films and the kinds of films 
the narrative and documentary competitions, all first time directors, no distribution uh, in, in place, um, low budgets. Uh, we also, something people forget is we mix and match the Americans with the international people, which is, which is different than a different approach in Sundance. So, I mean, we showed Bong Joon-ho's first film, you know, back in 2000 or something, and it was showing right next to like films from Iowa. And, and we continue to do that. We have a South Korean film this year. Uh, we have a Polish film and a Macedonian film, things like that, like along with the, the American films. Um, and then we also have the section called Breakouts, which is for not first time directors. So that's kind of our out of competition section. So, so Mark Pellington's film is part of that. Um, so yeah, but it's, uh, and then a million shorts and different and all kinds of shorts and things like that. But we, you know, and slam dances are, you know, the, the thing about us is that y you may not see a film, uh, unlike our friends down the, the hall at the, or down the, down the hill at Sundance, where a lot of the films already have distribution and you're going to see them in a month or whenever our films, you may never see them somewhere else. Um, but you may hear about those direct, you may see those directors some other time. So, and, and, you know, as, as you know, I mean, we were the film that we were the festival that showed the first films of Bong Joon-ho, Christopher Nolan, Ryan Johnson, the Russo brothers, uh, the late Lynn Shelton, um, you know, Lena Dunham, uh, uh, the Safdie brothers, uh, Sean Baker, you know, and, and a lot of these people came back then as alumni and jurors and things like that. So, um, so that's, that's the funny thing is, is yeah, you'll, you'll see the first film of people that you are definitely going to see their, their last film too, eventually. Um, but yeah, but as far as the kinds of films we picked, uh, that's the same this year. We, we just made the decision a few weeks earlier than Sundance that we were going to go virtual. We kind of, we, I don't know, for whatever reason, we saw the writing on the wall a little sooner than they did about Omicron. But, um, uh, but look, as for me, I've been playing live festivals. I, uh, you know, we finished 18 and a half in September, uh, premiered it at the Woodstock film festival. I I've dubbed the term, uh, trough fests, which are festivals that take place in the troughs between Omicron spikes. So my film, uh, played between the Delta and Omicron spikes, and then it's going to play again between Omicron and I don't know, parallax or whatever the next spike is going to be. Um, so just today and Chris, I can, I can break the news right here. Uh, our UK premiere is going to be at the Manchester film festival in on March 18th. Um, and that was just announced today. So, um, so we're, and that'll be a live festival. They're planning it live. And that's the interesting thing is I, is as a filmmaker, I can kind of gauge where other festivals are year round in a, in a different way than, you know, if you're just running a festival, you're kind of, you know, just insulated uh, from yourself. And I can see that festivals starting in March and April are going to be live again. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, they're already planning, um, you know, those festivals, depending on wherever they are in the world, um, they're going to be live again then. And, but yeah, but January, you know, you don't have to be an epidemiologist to know which way the wind blows. That's, that's, that's always going to be a spike of something. So yes, I'll say I'm not like, a doctor, but flu season is pretty much the same every year. And it's right yeah, around, right around. Yeah, and I'm not a doctor, but as you know, I sleep with one frequently and that's, um, you're married to one. Oh, that's it. That's, I knew it was something like that. And I can <laughs> tell you that flu season is remarkably predictable. It's, and, it's, so, um, it's, it's, it's so weird because I've even been to, to Sundance in, in Park City where one of our writers was down for the count and actually had to go see a doctor. Like that's how, yeah. like it's just, that's when it happens. You have people flying in. I just think that the way to solve this problem forever is to move the festival. I think a trial run in 2022 this summer, um, if anyone from Sundance is listening, like just try it. Just do a, yeah. you know, any, anyone. So, I mean, I mean, why a slam dance could do it. You don't need permission from Sundance to do what you do. I know that slam dance kind of is like on the heels of um, Sundance, but I don't think yeah. you need permission. I think if you did it, no. I think the city, I think you could actually own the city if you did it without the permission of Sundance. Right. Like I feel like slam dance could do that. So some, something I would just love because that, that I, I, I was fortunate to go to um, Park City once in the summer and it's beautiful where the street was, the bottom of the street was closed off and it's sort of a, it's almost like a beer fest and it's, it, it's a blast. I mean, it's a whole other experience. You've been there during the summer. It's a whole other experience. So um, I'd like to see them try it. Uh, I, I hope that, 
uh, the powers that be are listening. And I intend to take full credit if it does happen. If it does Absolutely. happen, I will, no, me I will, too. I'll take a full credit. I'll say I called it, and Dan called it second. And that's what I'm going to say. Now, what is, the, what is the status of 18 and a half? I know you're successfully playing festivals now. What's yes. the status? So, yeah. So we are uh, we're in the process of negotiating some distribution deals. So um, that is going to happen. Um, I can tell you it will most likely come out commercially um, and probably theatrically uh, at the end of June, um, which just between you and me and, and the four of us here is the 50th anniversary of the Watergate, um, break-in. So that seems to be the time to put out a Watergate related film, which ours is. Um, so we're kind of gearing up for that and, uh, all kinds of fun things are going to happen. I've been working on a soundtrack album and, and things like that coming out. Um, so, and yeah, we have a bunch of festivals coming up in, in the springtime and, you know, I mean, partially by design and partially by luck, we made a point of playing at live festivals at Woodstock, at Tallgrass, at Anchorage and Sao Paulo in Brazil and Gijon in Spain, while everyone else was waiting around for Sundance and the industry was waiting around and the, and the, and the press not you guys, but other press were just, oh no, we're not going to cover Woodstock this year. Why? We're going to wait for Sundance. And if you didn't get into Sundance, you must suck. And it's like, guys, there's a pandemic going on. We are going to go, as if another filmmaker friend of mine said, go where the love is. If there's an audience, go there and be nimble and, you know, go where you can go. And, and festivals are making decisions at the last minute. And as filmmakers, you just have to roll with that. And the problem with the kinds of films that are at Sundance is the ones that already have the big distribution and the big distributors on board or the big reps is they told those filmmakers, no, don't go to any fall festivals, you know, wait six months, wait eight months for Sundance. And then all of a sudden those filmmakers are crestfallen. They don't, they didn't get a live premiere and the ones that already have distribution lined up for next month, they're never going to have a live screening. Now, oddly enough, the, the filmmakers at Sundance and Slamdance that don't have distribution in a weird way, they're, they're going to be okay. They will have live screenings because what, what will be interesting to me is that is which of the spring festivals, the spring regional festivals are going to really capitalize and say, hey, why don't we just show a whole bunch of Sundance and Slamdance films and, and that'll be their live premiere. And those filmmakers are going to eat that up. So whether that's Dallas or, or Florida or Sarasota or Omaha or San Luis Obispo, like, you know, I mean, you guys know there's a lot of really great festivals in the spring that are quote unquote regional festivals. Well, those guys are going to step up in a big way because they can, they now have their pick of any of those Sundance films. Um, so I yeah. think that'll be the interesting thing moving forward is which of the, which of those live festivals in, in March and April and May are really going to uh, take advantage of all these Sundance films and filmmakers that are kind of floundering now. Well, look, the world is is disrupted. The festival world is disrupted. And if there's one thing I do know that filmmakers uh, are good at dealing with, it's adversity. So we roll with the punches. We're going to be wrapping up the stream here in just a few minutes. Um, but Dan, I, I really, uh, I want to go around and get everybody's, we didn't do this last time we did our live stream. We'll be doing another live stream later this week to wrap up slam dance and then we'll do another live stream about slam dance so please come back look for those notifications subscribe to the film threat youtube channel set the notifications and the bell so you know when we go live you'll you'll be able to jump in whether you're i've listened to live streams in my car when i'm driving sometimes i don't i don't post comments but i do listen um but i want to thank dan mervish dan uh, my friend of god since the 90s uh from being here for being here and yeah and he still has a t-shirt free t-shirt i gave him 20 years ago, 20 plus years I know. ago. We use it for it's painting well used, and things yeah. like that. It's a little yeah. schmutzy, but good, it's- uh, Good, I have, I have some old t-shirts like that. I have a t-shirt well. Oh my God, I have a t-shirt that Richard Linklater gave me years ago for the movie Slacker. I still have it wow. from the, That's from the early 90s. But Dan, so where can people find you on social media and find out information about where your film 18 and a half is screening? Uh, on, on, on the Twitter and the Facebook and the Instagram, I'm usually at Dan Mervish. Um, 18 and a half is typically at 18 spelled out and a half movie. Um, and, uh, uh, or, or just my website, danmervish.com. 
And um, that's the easiest way to to find me and 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 see what what other interesting festivals around the world I'm going to be going to because I have fun with my films. I like to go to fun places. Like, you are you're such a ringmaster when it comes to the marketing <laughs> of your movies, and I really put it that way. You're a showman, and and I, and I love that. Not just from the unique hats, but also just yeah. the way that you market a movie. You make it. It's not just a movie. It's like a movement. So I, I, I yeah. Like, if my if my yeah. Q and A isn't as long as my movie, I'm I'm not successful. You know. <laughs> And, 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 you know, and it's tough because we've been getting protesters at every one of our screenings, uh, pro Nixon protesters keep showing up mysteriously. So, uh, look, I, I'm a little worried that they're going to find us in at the spring festivals too. <laughs> I've seen, I've seen the photos on social media, but, um, Dan, thank you for being here.